Hi friends, welcome to episode 74 of the Quirky Monday Craftcast. My name is Kalisha and you can find me anywhere online as Nadira Tani. Thank you so much for coming to spend some time with me today. I do appreciate it. Um, today is February 21st, Thursday, February 21st, and I'm coming to you from my home in Central Florida. Um, I I am recording rather late in the day. It's like after five o'clock right now. So the sun is going to be setting soon. So place your bets down below how far we get into this podcast before you can't see me. <laughs> it is what it is. Um, but I really wanted to record today um, so that I could have it edited and up tomorrow morning um, because I still have some, a whole lot of sewing that I'm doing, but we'll get into that later. Um, at the top of the episode, I did want to talk about some admin. Since it is the 21st, that means the Pisces season make-along has started. It actually started on the 19th, and um, I am like crazy excited about this. Like, there's there's a chatter thread over on Ravelry. I will put a link down below. And lots of you guys are participating. You guys are using the hashtag on Instagram. I am stupid excited. So thank you so much for participating in my first ever solo make-along. Um, the Pisces season make-along is running all throughout Pisces season, which is February 19th to March 20th. It is open to any craft at all. So of course, being that this is a is predominantly like crochet and knitting podcast, most mostly everybody is doing something yarn based. But I have seen um, some people who are doing embroidery. Um, we have people who are doing weaving. Um, I keep telling myself once the sewing settles down, I am going to bring out the watercolors. Um, but yeah to qualify for your project to qualify for the make along it just has to be either piscinian colors meaning like blues greens watery type colors or um if you're doing like a pattern or a um painting or i don't know something like that um make it marine life or ocean life um focused so either of those things you would be able to uh, qualify your item to be in the make-along. I think that's everything that I want to say about it. Um, we do have, we've had some uh, really generous donations for prizes, so thumbs up for that. And yeah. Um, I did have another announcement. Last week, I totally forgot to do um, the highlights of you guys' positive moments. Um, and because I forgot to do that, we then had more comments on last week's episode of positive moments. So what I think I'm going to do is do a separate video highlighting the Quirky Monday Crafts community positive moments. It's gonna have a better title than that, but essentially that's what I'm gonna be doing. So whenever you guys share like your positive moments or good things that have happened to you in the comments below the video, I'll be collecting those, like whichever ones I get throughout the week and um, putting together a video. Um, I, I think what I'm going to do, like I don't really wanna leave anybody out but I also don't want like it to get to like where I'm like reading off like 20 different positive moments um, just because that's a whole lot of time and I don't know if I'm gonna have the ability to do like another video during the week, if that makes any sense. We'll see, I mean, it's rather small right now. We'll see how it goes, but be on the lookout for a second video um, coming from your friendly neighborhood, Kalisha. Um, of you all's positive moments because reading through the comments for me like I read every comment that is put on any of my videos and reading through them and seeing your positive moments and celebrating with you on these good things that are happening it's really uplifting and I want more people to be able to experience that same 
um, happiness that I'm experiencing by you all sharing with me. So, um, yeah, read the comments. People are sharing great things that are happening. Um, also, if you want to um, have your positive moment shared, when you type it in the comment section, just put like okay to share or shareable or something to that end so that I know it's cool. But I think that's everything for announcements. Um, we did have a pattern giveaway uh, to kick off the, the Pisces season make along. We did that over on Instagram. If you're not following me, my Instagram is um, Nadira Tani. I did start an Instagram page for Quirky Monday, but there's nothing on there. So um, if you like tag Quirky Monday in something or like use um, like the username quirky.monday, it will link you to that page but there's nothing on there it's not really active I just really signed like pulled it or like started it so that nobody else would get it but all of the good stuff happens on Nadir Atani so all that being said let's jump into the craftiness and I have two finished objects for you and one of them is this lovely piece that I'm wearing I'm super excited that it is finished and you guys if you're a long time viewer you'll be completely like proud of me that in both of our finished objects I have woven in all of the ends <laughs> who even am I so this is the summertime tea by TL yarn crafts also known as Tony Lipsy I will get up so that you can see it And you guys got a sneak peek of my other finished object right here, but we'll come back to that one. So, here it is. Don't you guys love my dance moves? I know. I'm like, I'm like a dad when I dance. Fun facts. So, I made this pattern, or this top, like four inches longer than it was supposed to be. And as I was like crocheting up the pieces, I was like, bruh, I think this was a bad idea. I shouldn't have added those extra inches. Um, I was really overzealous with how much. I should have like only like lengthened it by two inches. But I went for the full four, I don't know. I don't even know why I came up with four inches. Just picked a number out of the ether <laughs> but I really like the length that it came to um, as you saw it's like tunic length it's super comfy it's not like cut up in my armpits which I really like um, I had this on earlier when I was bringing all of my stuff outside um, for podcasting and the Sun was shining more directly on me and I was a little bit hot but I can see that this is going to be nice and like Florida appropriate, especially since it's not like clinging to me. Um, it is a mesh, like a mesh texture. So I am wearing a tank top under because modesty. Um, and I really like the wide neckline. I like the length of the sleeves. I just, thumbs up all around. Um, so yeah, as usual, I do link the link the um, designers and their information, <clears throat> excuse me, in the down bar. So if you are interested in getting this pattern, I definitely recommend it. It was very easy. Um, and the texture pattern was really um, simple to remember. Like, all those thumbs up, boop, 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 boop. Um, so yes, so that is my first finished object. And my second finished object is this. This is my Kwan's event wrap. It is the Nalia wrap by um, Shara Maid. And it's got Kiva hair all in it. But this is my life. This is the life I live. Everything is covered in dog hair because dog hair is like glitter. But 
This is called my Kwanzaa event wrap. Oh, look at look at how drapey it is. I love it. This is my Kwanzaa event wrap um, because all of these colors. Oh, let me show you from the correct way. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Those are all minis that I had that I opened during Kwanzaa. Um, which is celebrated the week after Christmas. Um, the last time I showed this on the podcast, I, th I think I was just starting this color. I think so. Um, five of the minis were given to me by um, Melinda of Yonder Woman, and two of them were sent to me by Alice Alishka, um, during Get Your Yarn Wishes Granted. These are the two from Alice Alishka, and all of the rest of the days were from Melinda. This section here, which is just, I love this. Can we just take a moment? I love it. This is just making me so happy on the inside. Um, all of these colors, except for the solid black, are um, yarns that I hand dyed myself. Um, if this is your first time watching and you don't know the significance, the significance of these colors, the red, black, and green are the colors of the Pan-African flag. Um, do a quick little Google search, learn you something. Um, but yes, I dyed all of these yarns except for the solid black and then all of the Kwanzaa event colors are separated by this solid gray, which is um, Deborah Norville. Now, whew, when I was making this, I was commenting on how long it was. And I was like, oh my goodness, I don't know what I'm gonna do with this. It's so long. I live in Florida. I think I'm making a poor choice. And when I finished, um, like crocheting all the way down to the end, um, I thought, let me just connect it and see what it looks like as an infinity scarf. So I didn't block it like traditionally. I just like stretched it out and ironed it on the wool setting, which I feel like is the same thing. But I love this. <laughs> I love it as an infinity scarf. It's got so much so much color, so much fun. Each one of the colors reminds me of the principles of each day. There was a squirrel jumping out the tree. I thought something was trying to get me. We're good. Um, and I just love it so much. But while I fuss around with it, I was like playing around with it um, like after I finished it, trying to see like if I could. Oh, what was the way that I had put it on? I somehow and it's a bolero guys now the back probably looks 18 kinds of crazy because it's literally just like twisted over itself but I can take this to church with me and like cover up my little shoulders and feel super fancy. Yay! So yes, again, this is a pattern by um, Shara Maid. Everything, of course, is always linked down below. And hers is much shorter <laughs> because it's actually meant to be like a, a wrap, but you know. It is, it, uh, I just wanted to use up as much of this, of the minis as I could. And I had 20 gram minis of each one of the colors. Um, and I think I have leftovers of all of the colors except for the rainbow one, which I ran out. I ran out of yarn with the rainbow one right at the end there. So that's a yarn chicken loss, but it's cool. It's fine. So yeah, that's all of my finished objects and we will go on to works in progress. Um, did I mention that I'm doing this without notes? 
I'm doing this without notes. So there's that. So I literally just threw the stuff, like things that I had been working on in this little basket. I might cover everything. I might not. Who knows? But living in one of my Quirky Monday craft bags is... Uh-oh. This is the Main Star Shawl by Zakia of the Lady Wing Crafts podcast and Lady Wing Designs. Nailed it. Mm. Normally I trip all over her names. Not today. But this is the uh, Main Star Shawl. And Zakia designed this um, basically for like, you know, how we all have those like one skeins of like really pretty yarn we don't know what to do with main star shawl and it's going it's going very slowly this is only the second shawl that I've knit and as I'm knitting on it I I remember why because it's taking forever it's fine but this yarn if I can get my fingers to work this yarn is hand spun by jade of the so perfect pearls podcast and the bat she spun was a bat by hobbledy hoy and the colorway is vintage blooms yes i kept calling it vintage rose when i first started showing this but it's called vintage blooms and one thing i really like about it i don't know how well you can see but there's like all kinds of little pops of color like there's some blue there some green um there's some bright yellow somewhere oh right here some bright yellow and they just keep being like blips of different colors i even got like a little slubby bit right here so it's really fun to like knit on and like each little stitch has its own little personality but um if the light keeps flickering on and off it's because um our back porch light has a motion sensor so if i move like a lot it'll pick me up and turn on and then it thinks I'm gone and then it turns back off so that's what's going on any hazel this is the first ball that I'm working with and my cake is starting to collapse on itself so I'm gonna I think I'm gonna re re cake this so that it stays neat but yeah I'm really liking it I have finally memorized the pattern and I can't wait to, oh my goodness, fingers. I can't wait to get it all blocked out because like this curl, like this edge is curling like really hard and I want to see, I want to see it finished. I want to see it finished. So I'm just working working on it as I can because um, it's not just like a two row repeat it's like a two row repeat and then a third row thrown in every so often um, I can't really do anything else while I'm knitting on it um, yeah so there's that my next work in progress see there goes the light again I want it to stay on Hold on a second. I'm going to see if I can make it stay on. I think I did the thing to make it stay on. We'll soon find out. Um, what was I saying? My next work in progress is the one that I started. It actually has not moved from the last time you saw it. I'm just refreshing you guys. But this is my project or one of my projects for the Pisces season make along. Um, I am making... I just feel better shawl which funny is like the same shape as the um, the main star shawl um, but this one is a free pattern of mine um, oh the main star shawl is also a free pattern um, but yeah so just feel better is a free pattern um, of mine it is uh, granny stripe granny stripe granny stitch um, asymmetric triangle shawl super super easy super meditative like watch a movie crochet you a shawl type deal and yeah this color what is this colorway no 
I don't think this is gnome. I forget what colorway this is. I'll put it on the screen. But this is a mandala cake. That's what it looks like. Um, the actual full colorway does have a brighter purple and a neon pink with it. But I cut that out because Pisces. Um, and I'm really... Oh, I just really love, I just love looking at this. I think I need to just take a picture of this and just like keep that for like inspiration. Like I really love those colors. So that is my project or one of my projects for the Pisces season make along. So I am gonna pick this back up and put it back into rotation since I didn't wanna finish it um, before the make along started. Um, what's in this bag? What's in here? Oh, we've got some sock lips in here. We've got, oh, I stopped this one in the middle of a row. Did I? What did I do? Oh, yes, it's this way. I'm like, what in the world is happening here? I didn't do it right. The light didn't stay on. No? Okay. It'll turn on. Um, this is the movie sock, plain vanilla, heel flap and gusset. A bunch of you guys gave me some tips about doing a heel flap and getting it the right length. Um, I think I just, I don't, I don't think I knit enough rows. I think I was supposed to do, I don't know what I was supposed to do, to be honest. I was just doing the things and making up stuff at the last minute making decisions at the last minute but you know it fits my foot so I'm just gonna do the same thing on the second sock and then the next time I do a heel flap and gusset we'll get it right but this yarn is Croy FX I think um, in the Kala Lily colors way Kala Lily colors colorway And the contrast in the heel and the cuff is Patton's Croy socks in flax. Also in this bag is my other, ooh, look at, look at that, look at that. This is how I live my life, guys. Daring things to tangle and snatch the needles out. It's fine, it's fine. <laughs> This is my second um, Kia sock by Dawn Landix, um, also known as Dawn Dot. Nope, Dawn Henderson, also known as Dawn Dot Landix on Instagram. This is um, her sock pattern, and I just have the cuff done. Um, I am getting into. I think I did one row of the patterning. Yeah, I did one row of the patterning, so that's in progress. The yarn. As I say every week, is Firestarter by um, Queen's Yarn Boutique. That's how it looks. I'm really enjoying this sock. Um, yeah, so those are my two sock whips, and they are living in this project bag that was given to me so kindly by um, Hannah of the Cozy Cottage Crochet. Hi, Hannah. Um, I'll be talking about Hannah later on long as the sun lets me um, yes so those are all of my yarny works in progress now I have some sewing works in progress that I want to show you so last week I mentioned that I was making some skirts for some members in my church for Black History Month these are two of them this is a matching mother-daughter skirt set. So, the daughter is not this tall. She's like five. Is she five? I think she's five. Um, but yeah, so, I was unable to get the measurements for either the mother or the daughter. So the mother sent me like their skirt sizes. She was like, you know, extra large for me, 5T for my daughter. So then I had to go and like Google like what those measurements are inches wise. So fingers crossed these really fit. Um, yeah, but look at this fabric. This fabric is like everything beautiful and delightful and whimsical in the world, isn't it? Like, 
I love it. But this one for her daughter, I did just a regular um, elastic waistband. Um, and I'm supposed to be meeting up with her either this evening or tomorrow to measure how tall or how long they want the skirts to be so that I can just go joop and hem it up real quick and have these to them um, to wear to church on Sabbath. So that's the daughters. And then this is the mothers. And I did an elastic waistband on hers um, because I didn't have actual measurements. So same thing. This is actually my first time doing a exposed elastic waistband. Um, I found some tutorials on Pinterest and stuff like that so it was it was first of all the tutorials that I found were like very general right so when I tried to do the skirt based on the the measurements and instructions from the tutorial it didn't quite work like the skirt body like the fabric part was too big for the waistband. And yes, I know that when you're sewing the elastic waistband, you're supposed to stretch it out, sew it, then let it snap back. Even when I stretched this out, like the full way that the stretch will go, it was still not enough to accommodate how much fabric the tutorial said that I should cut for the skirt. So, um, yeah, there's that. So I, let me show you this end because this is what I, I tried to do. This was originally going to be the waistband side. Um, as you can see, we've got like these sewn lines here. These, this is how you gather a skirt. You take, you do um, a basting stitch, two basting stitches, and then you take your front. It would help if I actually had two front ones. We'll show you on this side. You take your front threads and you hold on to them and then you can slide your fabric along like that to create gathers like that's how you do a gathered like if you want to do a gathered waistband so first I sewed with like regular the regular cotton thread that I had been using sewed my two basting lines picked up my two strands started pulling it across but I don't know if it was because it was super late and I was like a little bit sleepy or pulling too hard or whatever but I kept breaking the thread and if you break the thread you lose the gather it's very frustrating so then I was like okay well I'll just use this thicker like thread and I think this is like upholstery thread I sewed my two lines but this fabric did not want to gather like look at that it did not want to gather across this thread so I was just like you know what I can't do it I'm, I'm done, I'm over this. And I went to sleep and before I fell asleep, I was like thinking about it. And then I was like, you know what, Kalisha? What you can do is hand sew the basting stitch. So instead of using your machine, just hand sew a running stitch across the fabric. Just do one, one row and then gather it along that. Um, then I still had the problem of like, okay, well, it's gonna need to have space for the elastic. So then I was like, well, you can just pull the elastic however far it'll go, measure that, gather your fabric to that measurement, and then stretch and sew the elastic to the, the gathered fabric. And it worked. So I hope that all made sense. So I ended up sewing around this thing like three times, trying to get that waistband but we have waistband so I have one more skirt to do and that one I haven't started yet this is actually the fabric here that I'm gonna be doing that skirt out of this is another Ankara print um, but that skirt um, is for my friend Tiffany and she's asked for pockets I've never done pockets in a skirt before I know how to do pockets, like in theory. Um, so it shouldn't be too big of a ordeal. So what I'm thinking is I'll cut the fabric, 
then I need to cut it in half so that I can have two seams going up the sides and then I'll get I'll do all the gathering and sew them to the waistband I think before sewing all the way down the sides or maybe I'll just sew like a couple inches down the sides after, like below the waistband so that the waistband is finished you have a little bit of the seams and then I'll put in the pockets sew those in however you're supposed to do that and then finish sewing down the rest of the skirt if you are a sewer sewist let me know if that made any sense or if I'm like headed for major disaster thanks guys but yeah skirts number one and two are mostly finished um yeah skirt number three has yet to be started and there is a fourth skirt I don't know if skirt number four is going to get finished because skirt number four is for me and as much as I want to have like a birthday Sabbath skirt I'm not going to like I'm putting that at the very bottom of the list so let me grab it I want this skirt so badly guys like okay so what you're seeing here is like a masterpiece of sewing pins there, nothing is sewn together nothing is attached this is like just a whole bunch of pins because I was just brainstorming it trying to figure out what's the best way to gather this tool and after sewing that waistband this not gonna work so I've got another plan going in my head but this is like the this is the look I'm going for now I mean not see-through we're not going for see-through for a skirt I'm gonna wear to church um, I'm gonna put a black lining underneath it but again for Black History Month we're doing the pan-african colors so we have the red the black and the green I'm going to like right now all of the tool layer all the tool layers are the same length but when I finish I'm gonna trim them so they'll be like like that right so they'll, you'll be able to see all three of the layers all three of the colors yeah you see why like this is really awesome I really really want this so I need to hurry up and finish those skirts so that I can get to this one because I mean we all want to make things for ourselves right especially when you can wear it the day before your birthday so yeah okay bye Jane oh look at look at look at this you see all this all this foolishness but it looks beautiful from the front can you twirl oh my gosh this is delightful okay guys I think that's the last time I'm gonna have to get up out of this chair I didn't make notes so who knows um yeah so I think that's all of my works in progress check the bag yeah that's all the works in progress so now we will get into maker plans um, I only have one thing on maker plans and it is actually a test crochet um, I am testing the old faithful head wrap by Crochet Land by Brittany. And um, it looks like it's going to be like a very simple, you know, like head wrap, um, kind of in the vein of like an ear warmer. Um, I am doing, I forget what size, like little children sizes I think I'm doing, um, which could be like, <laughs> excuse you, stop screaming. You guys did say you like the bird sounds. <laughs> anyway, um, could be a poor choice for me because I'm pretty sure that the sizes I signed up for, I don't know any children in those sizes. So, yep. I'm doing that. I'm doing that. But that's the only thing on maker plans. And 
let's talk stash positions. So, I got a Christmas present from my mom. And then I got some surprise birthday presents from some sweet podcasty friends. Um, so first, let me show you the Christmas present from my mom. Now my mom lives in, oops, sorry, hit the, hit the camera. My mom lives in Delaware. So she went to the Yarn Maven and this is one of the local yarn shops up there. And I follow them on Instagram and um, they had posted uh, over Christmas that they had gotten some new yarn in and I was like, mom, can you go to the yarn shop and get me this yarn? But um, yeah, so she picked this up for me. And it's actually not blowing out as as brightly as I thought it was going to be. There's all manner of animal shenanigans happening in the trees tonight, guys. Focus, Cleesh. We're trying to we're trying to race the sun. We're almost we're almost out of time. So yeah, this is Koopnitz Sock Yeah in the Xenon colorway. And last. Was it last summer? No, it was not this past summer, but the summer before that. Okay, some of you guys aren't in the Northern Hemisphere, so let's try that again. It wasn't this past like June, but the June before that, um, Susan of the Knit Lib podcast, at least I think it was in June, whatever. Susan of the Knit Lib podcast hosted a crop top cow, and I knit the Miet sweater by Andy Satterlin out of yarn this color. Y'all, it was day glow. Amazing. So like when I saw this, I was like, ooh, I can have day glow socks. I just think like this, this particular shade of shocking pink is, everybody should have something in this particular shade of shocking pink. Like, right? So that was a Christmas gift from my mom. Thanks, mommy. The next things we have are birthday gifts. And I received some super generous birthday gifts. I would like to thank Tina and Hannah and Claudia and Stephanie for sending me these. Uh, you all spoiled me too much. <sighs> okay, so I showed you guys a big box of yarn that we got as donations for the podcast last week. And I don't want to like inundate you with like all the yarns. So I'm going to show just like a couple bits and pieces from the, the birthday gifts that they these lovely ladies sent me. And then um, whatever I don't show you now, um, you will see as I start working with them in like the coming weeks, months, what have you. So who's closest? The closest one is from Claudia, and Claudia is the host of the Crochet Luna podcast. She also has the Crochet Luna Etsy shop where she sells the buttons um, that are like crafty related, but specifically um, crochet related, which is super awesome because a lot of times you see like different crafty things, but they'll be like more knitting. Um, like knitting geared and, and, and knitting themed so it's really nice to be able to see something that is crochet themed as well but Claudia made me a bag and it is beautiful I showed it to my mom and she was like oh my gosh I love that so much so this is the bag from Claudia look at that I just I really really love it and then this is the fabric on the inside. And speaking of fabric on the inside, she also sent me some other fabric. And she said, she, when she saw this, she was like, obviously this is for Kalisha. It's little fishy. So um, this, it's probably about a yard. Oh no, it's more, is it? Hello? How is this folded? Yeah, it's about a, no, it's about two yards. But look at that. So cool. Um, so who knows, maybe I'll use something, maybe I'll use this to make something for the Pisces season make along. 
I don't know. The possibilities are endless, y'all. Thank you so much to Claudia for this fabric goodness. And she also sent me yarn. And this is Truly Hooked Hand Dyed Yarns. She said she got the, oh, see? We'll put it right here. She said she got this when she went to Yarndale. So. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's so pretty. And it's sparkly, which you can't see because this light is hecka bright. Um, it's like blues and greens and yellows. And it's just, it's my colors, y'all. It's my colors. So big thank you to Claudia for this beautiful birthday gift. Um, like I mentioned, she she has the um, Crochet Luna Etsy shop where she sells buttons. And these, these are some of her buttons. She sent me, can you see it there? Oh yeah, equal, oh, hello. Equal Opportunity Crafter. Cro oh gosh, <laughs> Crochet Love. And courageously it says courageously crocheting on but she sent those and and a sweet sweet note um, or rather a, a card where she was telling me about how she found the fabric and and the lady that she bought it from so that was really really nice thank you so much Claudia for this gift mm. next we have Hannah and Hannah is the host of the Cozy Cottage Crochet Podcast. Um, I highly doubt that you're watching this podcast and don't watch her as well as Claudia. So I'm, I'm not telling you guys anything new when I say that they're awesome women and you should follow them. But she made me this bag. And <laughs> you can see Hannah has a thing for like the glittery fabrics. Look at that. So she said that she made me a universe bag because she's thankful that I'm a part of her universe. And if you are a returning viewer, you know that I always thank you guys for being a part of my universe. And I'm a little bit um, space nerdy. But um, yeah, she made me this bag and it has pockets inside. It's got four pockets. Is it four? Can I count? It's got four pockets. I just want to put things in it, like, like squirrel things away in here. But she also sent me some yarn. I'm only going to show you one. Wow. Thank you, Light. Technology. I'll just turn the exposure down. She sent me this yarn, which is like the sister to this yarn. Look at that, they sisters. Um, but this is a DK, this one is a fingering. Oh, this one is sparkly too. Sparkles, greens, and there's like gold in here, a little bit of burgundy, surprisingly. Um, and like just a little, a little bit of teal in this. And this is Sweet Tea Yarns by Molly Klein Design. And this is an InSync Just Got Paid colorway. InSync Just Got Paid. Hey. I love that. She sent me another skein of yarn, but I'm going to keep that one under wraps. Um, it is a Malabrigo worsted single, um, but it's a super wash base. So that's a thing. She wrote me also a really sweet <laughs> birthday card. Um, and sent me some tea, which I'm going to have to hunt down that tea. It was so delicious. Oh my gosh. Um, so big thanks to Hannah. Thank you so much for spoiling me. Um, I sent her a message and I was like, I'm just spoiled, spoiled, but I'm so grateful for you guys. Like I don't have crafty friends around me. So like. You guys are my crafty community. So, thank you, Hannah. Um, this next person who sp 
spoiled me on my birthday, or not even on my birthday, before my birthday, um, is Tina. And um, I follow Tina on Instagram. She's a sweetheart. She's super excited. She, like, she gets really excited about things, and it just makes me laugh. Um, but she sent me some goodies. She told me that she went stash diving with my favorite colors in mind, and she sent me like a variety of yellow, green, and blue yarns, which I'm super grateful for. Um, she sent me some yellow um, Charisma by Loops and Threads, which is um, the yarn that I made the Bell, Bell Plain Beanie by Janet Sloan out of, and I'll put a picture. But she sent me some of that. Um, so I'm going to have so many Bell Plain Beanies because one, the hat is beautiful. Two, I now have three different colors that I want to make. Yes, three additional colors that I want to make that hat out of. So, can you have too many hats? Not when you have a head full of hair. You can never have too many hats. So, but she sent me this project bag. She said when she saw it, she had to get it. It's Rugrats. Chucky's my favorite Rugrat. Um, I just feel like he just always needs a hug. And I'm here for you, Chucky. Oh, he's just so cute. And then she also sent me this pen from Radical Dreams. It says Blessed. Um, oh, there we go. Um, Radical Dreams is actually a black owned pen making company. Um, I've bought from them before and their designs are like really awesome. Then she also sent me this Pisces pen. Oh, there we go, so you can see it. And I think I'm gonna put this pen on this bag and put my Pisces season make along project in it. Mm -hmm. And then this I was super excited about. She sent me a set of Black History flashcards. And I kept seeing these on Instagram, um, and it's just really cool. It says, um, Urban, Urban Intellectuals is proud to present its first volume of Black History flashcards designed to combat the miseducation and suppression of Black achievements around the globe. This 52-card series gives a strong foundation on the many untold stories events and unknown figures that have given shape, color, and definition to the worlds of academia, science, civil rights, education, the arts, and more. Um, enjoy learning about the revolutionary, the revolutionary contributions of blacks. Take pleasure in sharing all that you learn with friends, educators, and most importantly, our youth. It is imperative that they understand black history, become inspired, and take action to build their own greatness. I love it. I went through um, I went through the cards and um, I'm very excited that I knew a lot of the um, people that were in there as well as like some of the events but there were also quite a few that I hadn't like learned about before so I'm excited about this I love educational things and I think mosquitoes are starting to come out like the sun's gone but I finally figured out how to make the light stay on but I look like I have on a, like a spotlight, like good cop, bad cop. And the last gift I wanted to share with you guys was sent to me by Stephanie. Now Stephanie, hello, oh that's a mosquito. Oh and I missed him. Oh he's gonna come back for me with his friends. Um, come up to, I'm gonna have to speed up. Um, Stephanie has an interesting story for how she knows me. Um, she sent me a message, I think it was on Instagram, and she was saying how um, she came across my podcast and started watching it, and when I said my name, she was like, I only know one other person named Kalisha. And she was like, you know, message me to see if I was the child of her college friends. And I totally am. <laughs> so, yeah, so hi Stephanie. Um, I was FaceTiming with my mom yesterday and I was showing her um, these progress keepers that Stephanie gave me. And um, I told her 
that she said hello and in the in the the birthday card that Stephanie sent uh, she put her her maiden name and so when I told her told my mom who it was my mom was like oh, yes we were friends oh my goodness tell her I said hi so Stephanie my mom says hi <laughs> Um, I haven't gotten to FaceTime with my dad yet, but um, I will definitely be telling him that you said hi as well. But she sent me these uh, progress keepers, and they are from Crafty... Oh, all the bugs. All the bugs. Away with you. They are from Crafty Flutter by Creations. Oop. Again, everything will be linked down below. But she sent me two collections. This one is favorite things, and I forget what this one is called, but it's basically like crafty things. So there's like a pair of scissors, some buttons, and then like sheep. So that's that one. And then the favorite things one, I'm just going to put a picture in so that you can see because you're not going to be able to see it with, with the shining happening. <laughs> um, but yes. So thank you so much, Stephanie, for sending me those, these progress keepers. I'm going to be spreading these out over like all of my, all of my projects. I don't have enough projects going for keeping progress with these progress keepers. Ah, oh, must start new things. Okay. The Skeeters are coming out, y'all. The Skeeters are coming out. So I wanted to um, talk about... I have someone for Black Fibers, Black Threads that I wanted to highlight with you guys, but I think I'm gonna have to move this operation inside because I'm not trying to be buggy dinner. Ooh, ooh, must quickly go on. All the, all the bugs are coming. For Black Fibers, Black Threads this week, I wanna talk about an embroidery artist that I came across on Instagram. Um, you know how like on Instagram you have like the search or explore tab or whatever um, and it'll just like show you different things that Instagram thinks you would be interested in one of the things or one of the people that came up um, was actually it wasn't their personal Instagram account I don't know if she has one but um, it was another Instagram account that was highlighting black artists like in celebration of Black History Month um, and this artist's name is Ruth Miller and she does like embroidery portraiture which is amazing and I'm gonna put up some pictures of her work so that you can see it like it really looks like someone was sketching these pieces with like color pencil but it's it's all embroidery thread and I thought that would be really cool um, just to like kind of get away from the yarn like yarny things um, for black fibers black threads and like take a different look but um, her work it's it's amazing she has a piece called unspoken truths and um, she said, have you ever felt you knew exactly what action would fix a problematic situation but were reluctant to point it out? That's the subject of unspoken truths. Stitch in a path similar to the feedback loop. The text surrounding the figure reads, does the mouth dare reveal what the eyes have seen? Is, it, is there even an audience for it? The logo on his shirt, visible in larger view. Uh, reads unspoken truths way too heavy I find it really interesting that I came across this art this artist um, when I did because that really speaks to what has been going on in the fiber community recently um, you know does by her saying does the mouth dare to speak what the eyes have seen you know so many of us have seen um situations where uh people of color are underrepresented and we are like treated in ways that are not cool but it takes 
more, you know, to actually speak out on those things. And I, like, I don't think of myself as like a speaker, you know what I mean? Um, I'm way more of an observer. Um, and I feel sometimes I'm moved to speak, right? So this really um, makes me thankful for the people that I have come across and gotten to know and um, been able to interact with who have been voices for the community or voices in the community um, about um, representation and racism and, and everything like that. Like being that mouthpiece is definitely um, a heavy burden. So I, I personally like want to send out my gratefulness and, and appreciation to the people, to the heavy lifters, if you will, um, who have been pushing these conversations to the forefront. And I know that this is kind of like bleeding out of black fibers, black threads, but I think it's an important thing. So like, in just as um, Ruth Miller said, does, does the mouth dare to speak on what the eyes have seen? We should all um, live in a way that if we see injustice or if we see um, unfair treatment or if we see that something can be improved upon, then we should dare to speak on it. And um, I hope that, that we all are able to internalize that message a bit more as we continue in like whatever areas of life we find ourselves in, um, be it our local yarn shops or our workplaces or churches, um, places of worship, um, hanging out with friends, you know? Sometimes when we're hanging out with friends and someone makes a joke that's insensitive, you know, we should dare to speak against that. You know, we should dare to point out like, hey, it's probably not cool, you know? Um, or even that's definitely not cool. Um, but I, I just found it really interesting that I came across her when I did, right? And then on top of everything, on top of like the wisdom, like the, the wise nuggets that I found in her about me um, page on her website, like her work is amazing. Like I tried to embroider something once, didn't go well. Nope. <laughs> um, but yeah, I definitely encourage you to check out her work. Um, I will be linking her down below so that um, you can take a look at her gallery as well as, you know, read her About Me page. Like, it is it is really well written. Like, you know, sometimes you read About Me pages and they're just like, oh, such and such was born on this day and blah, 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 blah. And it's just kind of like plain. Like, her About Me page really read as like, a piece of writing and not just like something like slapdash put together like this is just general information about the artist um it was like like a piece in itself so um yeah so that is <laughs> black fibers black threads today black fibers black threads slash a little bit extra so yeah, I think that's everything. Um, my ankles are currently on fire because those mosquitoes tore me up. Like, it was like they were just waiting for the sun to set just enough and they all swarmed me. Like, I thought there were no mosquitoes out there. They were just waiting. They were just waiting. Because, oh man, 
I'm going to have to get the rubbing alcohol out because <laughs> I've got at least four mosquito bites on my ankles right now. No good. No good. Kiva, you want to say hi? No? I have a bowl of fruit sitting next to me and Kiva's sitting on the floor staring at it. Like, if I stare at it hard enough, she will give me some. You want the fruit? Yeah? You do? You really want the fruit? But yes. Um, thank you guys so much for being here today. Thank you for spending this time with me. Um, like I said earlier, leave uh, comments down below of something positive that happened to you um, within this week. If you would like me to share it on our Quirky Monday community good vibes video. <laughs> good things video um you know let me know that it is a shareable um post and keep a lookout for that video um if you're participating in the pisces season make along definitely use the hashtag on instagram so that i can follow along and see what you're doing um go and chat in the chatter thread um see what everybody else is creating like i have this vision in my head that the chatter thread or the finished objects thread and the hashtag on Instagram are just going to be like this sea of like bluey green beautifulness and I am so here for that. So um, the next time you guys see me, I will be 33 years old. Holy cannoli. Um, and yes, I hope you all have a wonderful weekend and a beautiful week um, yes that is everything thank you so much for being a part of my universe have a great night